Hello everyone, Philip Galinsky from Samba New York here. In this video lesson, I'll be teaching you two basic patterns for Samba on the Hipiquijanel. The Hipiquijanel is a fascinating Brazilian percussion instrument used mostly in Samba. The name translates literally as ring Hipiqui because originally the player would use a ring on one hand to play on the side of the drum. The Hipiquijanel was invented by the musician Mestre Doutor, or Doctor, whose unique Hepiki Gianel playing can be heard on numerous classic samba recordings from the 1970s by such artists as Clara Nunes, Roberto Ribeiro, João Bosco, and many others. The Hepiki Gianel has a very distinctive sound. It's played in a very interesting way. It's a super cool instrument, and I highly recommend you check it out. Before we delve into the subject of today's lesson, I just wanted to reiterate that there are many different ways of playing all of the different samba percussion instruments. And as always, I'll just be sharing with you my way of playing, in this case, the Hipiki Gianel. Before we delve into the rhythms themselves, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this beautiful Hipiki Gianel by Contemporanea that I have here. It is 12 inches in diameter. We have an animal skin head on both sides. You have a top head and a bottom head, both animal skin. It's beautifully constructed and it sounds amazing. Check it out. So now that you have a taste of what the Hipiki Janelle sounds like and a little bit about how it's played, let's jump right into how to play it. So originally the Hipiki Janelle was played on the lap at an angle and the player's dominant hand would alternate between playing on the shell of the drum and with the thumb on the top head and the player's non-dominant hand would play on the bottom head. And some Hipiki Janelle players still play this way today. Uh, on the other hand, other Hipiki Gianel players prefer to put the drum on a stand like I've done here. If the stand is high enough, you can play in the same way that you would play on the lap with the dominant hand alternating between the shell and the thumb on the top and the non-dominant hand on the bottom head. But if the stand is you know, a lot lower like it is here, you're gonna need to play with both the right hand or the dominant hand will still alternate between the shell and the thumb on the top head, but the the non-dominant hand will have to play only on the top head, not on the bottom head. So nothing's being played on the bottom head in this, in this scenario, okay? So I actually prefer to, to play the Hepika Gianel this way on a stand, and I like to play it at this height. Uh, one reason why some players prefer to put it on a stand is that if you're a percussionist and you're playing in a, on a gig or at a Hadaji Samba or a recording or whatever, it makes it a lot more practical to switch back and forth between instruments, right? So, especially in a live situation, if you're, you know, playing a Pika Janelle and then you have to quickly pick up another instrument, it's a lot more practical to have it on a stand, right? That way you don't have to put the Pika Janelle down, pick up another instrument, pick the Pika Janelle back up again when you want to play it. So, Anyway, this is the way that I prefer to play the Hipiki Janelle. There are different ways, so I would just encourage you to experiment and see what works best for you and take it from there. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about, you know, how you can position your Hipiki Janelle, let's talk about the different strokes that we can play on the drum. As I said before, originally the player would have a ring on the right hand to play on the shell of the drum. Uh, to get a, a metallic sound when playing on the shell. And other players opt to put thimbles on their fingers for that metallic sound, while other players prefer to tape coins to the side of the drum. And actually, that's what I prefer to do. Uh, in most situations, I'll tape coins to the side of the drum to get a sharper, louder metallic sound. In some quieter situations or when I'm just practicing at home, I prefer to just play on the the shell itself of nothing and that's what I'll be doing in this video but as I said in most situations I'll tape coins to the side okay so you can experiment with that and the right hand when I'm playing on the or my dominant hand when I'm playing on the side of the drum I'm just tapping it like this okay I'm hitting with the ends of my fingers I'm just the palm of my hand is maybe just grazing the rim of the drum, but I'm, I'm really just producing the sound with the ends of my fingers like this, okay? The right hand will also uh, play a thumb stroke on the top head. It's 
the same way you would play a thumb stroke on a pandero. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm swiveling my forearm and I'm striking the, the head with the side of my thumb. I'm catching a little bit of the palm of my hand on the head or the rim as well. Because if you just go like this, it's very hard to produce the sound and it also sounds very tinny or, or thin, right? So to get a little more bass in the sound, make sure that the palm of your hand is lightly touching the head or the rim. But really, the sound is being mostly produced from the, the side of your thumb, okay? So that's what my dominant hand is doing. My non-dominant hand or my left hand is going to be playing two different strokes. There's a closed stroke like this. So I have the palm of my hand about an inch or so, maybe yeah, about an inch or so between one and two inches from the rim and resting on the head. And then I just raise my hand and bring it down again. And I leave it on the head like that. Then I could produce an open tone in my left hand by moving my hand back this way and going like that. And for the open tone, I'm really producing the sound with the ends of my fingers. I'm catching the rim of the drum on the palm of my hand right here. You can either leave the hand on the rim or you can, you can bring it off. It depends on the, the context and, you know, the, the individual player. But those are the basic strokes that we'll be using. Now let's talk about the function of the different hands. The dominant hand tends to play some variation of telecuteco or the samba timeline on the shell. And we'll use the thumb for uh, maybe a particular rhythmic figure that's a part of the basic pattern or sometimes for variations. The non-dominant hand, or in this case, my left hand, will be playing. The foundation of what it plays is a very typical pattern that a drum set player would play on the bass drum of their drum set for samba. It's one of the typical patterns that can be played on the bass drum for samba, and it's like this. One, a two, a three, a four, a one. Okay, so all muted strokes. And then the open tone will come usually together with the open tone in the right hand for some kind of a rhythmic figure that's part of the basic pattern, or as I said before, for a variation or for variations. All right, so that's more or less what the the different strokes that we'll be using and the function of the two hands. Now let's jump right into the rhythm. So, but before we do that, I just wanted to mention that both of these patterns, basic patterns for samba on the Hapiki Gianel, I learned from Thiago Viegas and Junior Viegas from the excellent YouTube channel Aprendendo Percussão. So definitely check them out, check out that channel. And the first one, well, actually both of them make use of all 16 subdivisions of the cycle or measure, okay? In other words, we're going to be just playing a continuous stream of subdivisions. If we take the four main beats of the samba and we subdivide them each into four smaller beats, those are the subdivisions, and that's what we'll be playing. Okay, so there's 16 of those in each cycle or measure of the samba. All right, so pattern number one is going to be a lot easier to play because we're only going to be alternating hands. We're not going to be playing the two hands ever at the same time. Now, you may play more than one note in the right hand, for example, but you're never playing the two hands at the same time. There's always an alternation going on, okay? So let's break pattern number one down beat by beat. And each beat, remember, has four notes in it, four subdivisions, like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, so beat one of pattern number one is gonna be a left mute and then three hits in the right. So one E and a, and I'm gonna accent the a, the last hit in the right hand, so one E and a, that's beat one. Beats two and three are gonna be identical. It's gonna be another left hand mute. Uh, left, right, right, left. And I'm accenting the second hit in the right hand. Left, right, right, left. And then beat three, left, right, right, left. Okay, so putting all these together, beats one, two, and three, we have left, right, 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 left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, rest. Left, right, 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 left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, rest. Okay, beat four is going to be all open tones. So we're going to be playing thumb, thumb, hand, thumb. Or right, right, left, right. Try to make the, the open tones of the thumb and the hand more or less the same. Okay, so let's put all four beats together for pattern number one. One E and 
and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Okay, so let's play this in a continuous loop at a nice and slow tempo. Three E and a four E and a. Okay, now at a more medium tempo. Three E and a four E and a. Keep in mind that I'm accenting the last subdivision of each figure that I'm playing in the right hand. So one E and a, two E and, three E and, okay? Let's play now at a faster tempo. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, I hope you got it. If not, practice it, have fun with it, and let's move on to pattern number two for Samba on the Piki Gianel. Pattern number two is gonna be a little trickier because we're gonna have some instances in which we're playing our right and our left hands together at the same time, which could be a little confusing because sometimes we're playing them alternating, sometimes we're playing them together. So let's break it down hand by hand. So the right hand, uh, the left hand is gonna be playing uh, that very typical bass drum figure from a, a samba pattern on the drum set, which I mentioned earlier. It's going to be playing that for the entire time. It's going to be going one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. Okay? The right hand is going to be playing a pattern that's, you know, uh, similar to the first one, but a little different, again, based on Telekutaku or the samba timeline it's going to go like this. So beat one is going to be one E and a, and again, accenting the a, one E and a. Beat two is going to be two E and, and again, accenting the and, accenting the last subdivision. Beat three is going to be three E and, and we're going to accent the three, the first note, three E and, and beat four is going to be four E and a, and we're going to accent the first and the fourth one, the four E and a the four and the up, okay? So the right hand by itself would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now let's put these two parts together. Uh, and it, let's break it down beat by beat. The first beat will be, okay? So you're gonna have the right and left hand playing together there at the end. One E and A uh, on the A, uh, okay? So one E and A, uh, one E and A, uh, two E and A. Uh. Okay, beat two is gonna be two E and A. Uh. We've seen that figure before in the first pattern. Two E and A. Uh. Okay, so beats one and two together. One E and a, two E and a. One E and a, two E and a. Okay, beat three is gonna be three E and a. 
So together at first, on the first note, three, E, and, uh, and then the, uh, by itself in the left hand. Three, E, and, uh, and then four, E, and, uh. So three, E, and, uh, four, E, and, uh. So the left hand is going to be together with the right hand for both times in beat four. Four, E, and, uh, and the first and last subdivision. Four, E, and, uh. Okay, so we have, let's put it all together. We have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so let's play pattern number two at a slow tempo. Here we go. Three E and a, four E and a. Okay, now at a medium tempo. Three e and a four e and a. Three e and a four e and a. Now at a faster tempo, three e and a four e and a. All right, did you get it? If not, go back and practice it preferably at a slow tempo until you're really comfortable with it. All right, one final thing in this tutorial. I just wanted to mention that the rhythmic figure on beat four of pattern one, we can also apply to pattern two. So in other words, instead of going, we can go, So have fun with that, experiment with it. I would suggest mastering these two basic patterns and pattern number two with the variation. And uh, once you're really comfortable with that, continue exploring because the Hapika Janel has many different patterns that can be played, many different variations. You can even create your own variations, your own patterns. So have fun with it, study, and I'll see you in the next lesson.